So, this is the first time we can see ARM Cortex A15 for real. That's true. So, what does it mean? It's tape, tape out. What does that mean? So, we actually taped out this design about uh, four months ago. We've just actually got silicon back over the last uh, week or so. And uh, we could actually bring up uh, Android Gingerbread on it immediately. You see the welcome screen over there. Uh, so, we announced it in September last year with uh, three key partners. And it's been a year and we actually got uh, working silicon uh, pretty quick off the bat. So, what is the Cortex A15? The Cortex A15 is ARM's uh, highest end uh, application processor. It actually pushes performance well beyond what ARM's uh, processors have done before. The Cortex A9, which is the leading edge today, quad core, uh, is doing extremely well in the market and, and picking up things for the next generation. The Cortex A15 uh, increases the performance significantly. It's uh, a completely out of order, super scalar processor with uh, up to you know, 24 stages, but the main state platform is 15 stages. You effectively get a significant boost in performance on all phones, especially floating point uh, and media performance, as expected in today's mobile devices. Do you quote numbers, estimates? How much faster? So, it, depending on application and usage, we've seen anywhere from uh, today's mainstream mobile phones, single core gigahertz phones, could be up to five times the performance while still staying in the mobile Android. Five times a single core? Yes. Maybe. But you would expect these platforms to come out at least in dual core configurations. And of course, we have to sit within the uh, power profile for a mobile device. Does that mean maybe twice as fast as a Cortex A9? Well, in terms of delivered performance, you, it's very likely that you'll see uh, doubling the performance of the Cortex A9. At the same frequency? Uh, there will be some frequency components that will increase as well. but. Uh, your point is well taken. We can actually deliver more performance per cycle compared to the Cortex A9, which is a critical component of delivering power efficient performance. So how do you do that? Is it basically magic? or? <laughs> well, it isn't. Um, I think uh, microprocessor engineers around the world know what they're doing, uh, and ARM's been focused on that for 20 years. So going out of order superscaler has been a critical component. Uh, the, the branch prediction, as you'd call it, has improved. The memory system has improved, so getting data in is better, uh, getting things right most of the time, uh, or increased number of times, and doing more per cycle. That's how you get more performance. So basically, you fit more things into a smaller space with less metals and less stuff, but still it's more, it's much faster. That's true. So certainly, uh, the process technology shift helps. Uh, we are given a small, uh, set budget every generation for how much the, uh, the application processor has. So we are, certainly the size of the processor itself has grown compared to Cortex A9, but in the next generation that fits right in. So when you come with a new generation like Cortex A15, uh, you are dependent on uh, the foundries being able to make smaller, use smaller nanometer sizes? Certainly there is an ad additional benefit if that happens, but most of our cores are uh, designed to be portable across foundries. For example, uh, this uh, test chip that we made of the Cortex A15 is still in 40 nanometer. Uh, we expect the production uh, revs on this to be in 28 or 32 nanometer. So, you're the product manager on this, pro this product? Yes, I am. So, who, who works for you? What kind of people are those? So, as a product manager, it's uh, our job to define the processor in terms of its feature set, in terms of its uh, capabilities, based on the kinds of markets it go, goes into. So, we talk to the OEMs, we talk to the semiconductor vendors, we talk to the entire ecosystem, looking at what the processor needs to be to address what uh, the consumer will want or the enterprise will want in two to three years. Uh, the engineering portion is taken care of by the uh, respective processor engineering teams and we work very closely with them to make sure that we're uh, staying in sync about what we want and what the processor ends up becoming. So you go to the foundries, you go to, uh, you go to the chip makers, you go to the EDA providers and all you do together, you sit around a table and brainstorm and what happens? 
Well, I, it's not usually just a, a sit around the table for all of us, but you're right. We talked to the semiconductor vendors who are actually going to be delivering this product. We talked to the OEMs that are going to be buying this product. We talked to the EDA vendors who are going to be enabling the implementation of this product. And we also go to the software community, the tools community, that will be building software that runs on top of it. Uh, for example, in the Cortex A15, we, over the last few years, we realized the need for hardware support and virtualization, uh, need for larger physical memory addresses, so you know, the Cortex A15 can actually support about terabytes of physical memory. So all these feature sets come in from various uh, channels, and we put it together and then find the product. Does A15, can it run on 64-bit, or is it two different announcements? two different announcements. The Cortex-A15 is still an ARM 32-bit processor of the version 7 architecture. Uh, the Neon part of it can do data path processing 64-bit, but that's a, a, a media uh, angle. Um, so the 64-bit announcement is a separate announcement where we have the version 8 of the architecture, which not only provides a 64-bit capability, but full backward compatibility for any software that's designed for the Cortex-A5, A9, and A15. But the GPU does some some 64-bit stuff, or it only does it if the chip is 64-bit? Well, the GPU by itself can do 64-bit data processing. That's effectively independent of what we're doing. When we talk about 64-bit, uh, it's not just data about processing for 64-bit. It is about the virtual addressing of uh, more than 32 bits, or process memory being more than 4 gigabytes per, per process. And the V8... Uh, processor side takes care of that. The GPU can do 64 bit data processing, um, in fact, for the last few generations. So, when you designed uh, this, this product and you planned things for this product, basically the world needs a faster ARM processor, and that's the goal. And uh, is that how it's been? Something like that? Well, what you look at is uh, the mobile world is changing. Uh, you are seeing Smartphones become superphones, and superphones giving way to tablets and, and larger points of computation. Uh, also, as every device gets connected, the infrastructure to support them is uh, needing to scale. And the Cortex A15 is, uh, as we said last year, is uh, trying to address both effective markets. Uh, it's certainly a mobile processor at heart. Uh, it will go into uh, tablet processing, it, at, and in more aggressive process technology nodes, it will go into uh, wireless infrastructure type products. So you're right, it does need more performance, but we're not forgetting the need for power efficiency, which is, I think, the calling card of ARM. Are you thinking a lot about laptops and faster memory bandwidth for HD, multi-tab, web browsing? Is that part of the design? Certainly. Uh, the usage models change, but you're, we have been giving more focus on memory systems. We have been giving more uh, focus on effective and efficient media performance. Um, personalized computing devices that go beyond tablet are certainly uh, very strongly uh, attracted to this capability. Uh, and uh, as a whole, we see the personal computing industry changing a bit because each type of device uh, is changing in the way the user interacts with it. And uh, Cortex-A15's performance and feature set actually is designed to help that transition happen. So let's open the, the document viewer here. So basically, you could do Office Word, all that. Um, uh, of course, uh, Windows 8 is going to work. This is some kind of uh, Office app. Yes, and an Office app. So you would type and it just works and it's smooth and oh. it's going to be smooth. Right now it's not, not optimized, right? It's no, this is just fresh off the bat. We have actually managed to get, uh, uh, as I said, Android and this running in a matter of a few days after we got the chip back. We expect the final products to be a lot, lot more sophisticated and uh, uh, attractive. So is it, uh, is it faster than Intel? Well, it depends on what you're asking for. Certainly, in any of the mobile environments, you are going to deliver more performance in the same mobile envelope than what we see from the competitive space. Uh, we are not aiming just for a gigahertz war. We're talking about giving the most efficient performance, maximum amount of performance, in the minimum uh, power envelope. Is there enough performance now? We believe that this is uh, a great performance point. We are seeing uh, attraction to use it. Uh, just two years ago, a gigahertz uh, Cortex A8 processor was considered pretty sufficient. Uh, today's dual A9s are pushed in well beyond, and they're looking at quad-core A9s. We do believe A15 provides that next step. 
Now, in terms of is it enough, it will all depend on the application that's being used for. Let's say servers and laptops, we need A15 or we can do it with A9? Uh, you will see announcements or you have seen announcements in fact from uh, uh, server companies that are uh, trying for A9 based servers for very low cost uh, web serving applications. Uh, Cortex A15 broadens the scope, the scalability of the Cortex A15 going from one to four cores and beyond. In fact, eight cores gives you uh, an, uh, an interesting more paradigm for doing uh, high density servers. But uh, you, you definitely get a better server if it's A15 than if it's A9, or not necessarily? Not necessarily. I think that's where the innovation of our uh, uh, ecosystem, our partners, our OEMs comes in. You will see uh, different types of solutions optimized for different types of environments. We do believe A15 is a big step forward uh, for more effective uh, servers, but we think A9 for now is actually doing very well. So this whole industry is uh, growing like crazy, and uh, are you? Have you been like trying to ramp up and make things work even faster than you were expecting? And are you surprised that maybe it's ready already that we can see it? Or is it just following a plan that you've calculated 10 years ago and you know exactly when you're where? Well, it'd be uh, a complete lie to say we have an exact same plan from 10 years. We uh, are responding to the market. Certainly, we have a vision, and we've been putting on the king same vision of providing most performance, efficient performance uh, in terms of the power uh, used. So that's been common as a vision. But the market's continually changing and we're trying to keep track with it. Uh, I think the point you raised originally was, uh, are the mar time to market cycles changing? And that's certainly the case. Uh, this is an example. We, we have kind of working silicon. We announced a product a year ago. Uh, you will see actual uh, samples from, from our partners in the early part of next year. You will see devices soon. Uh, we do see the cycle getting shorter and shorter, and we expect to have to keep pace with it. So do you hire more and more engineers to try to make things faster? Uh, I think we do realize the need to scale, but we also realized the need to scale efficiently. So ARM has been growing and continues to grow today, uh, but it's not just throwing engineers at the problem, it's working efficiently. Uh, if you look at ARM's uh, approach, again, we work a lot with our partners. If you look at most of the semiconductor vendors, OEMs, they're the ones finally delivering the product, and ARM's making sure that we can equip them to deliver products sooner and faster.